Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be working with temporary and permanent differences. However, I'm going to go over practice questions to learn what you to practice what you have learned in the prior session. So, in the prior session, which will be in the description below, I explain temporary and permanent differences in a form of a lecture. Now, you, you want to see, do I understand this? Let's try to work some questions. This topic is covered in intermediate accounting, and it's very complicated topic for students, as well as, as well as the CPA exam, the FAR section. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. YouTube is where I house all my 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, tax, and finance lectures. And this is a list of all the courses that I cover. If you like my recording, please like them. It helped me tremendously. Click on the like button, share them, put them in playlist. If you're benefiting from my recordings, it means other people might benefit as well. So share the wealth. Also on my website, I do have additional resources such as PowerPoint slides, notes, multiple choice questions, true, false, as well as 2000 plus CPA questions, especially for CPA candidate. I strongly suggest you look into my website if you're studying for your exam or as a supplemental tool for your accounting studies. The prior session, once again, it's in the uh, it's in the description. Please click on it in case you want to view the related lecture. What I'm going to do first is go a series of true-false multiple choice questions to make sure you have a good understanding of the basic concepts that we covered. Then we'll dive into multiple choice questions. So the first true-false questions, as always, I don't have to remind you, either work those questions first or pause the video now and tell me if this statement is true or false. Depreciable property related to expense and losses that are deductible from taxable income after they are recognized in financial income. What are we saying is this. When we have depreciable property, first, they are deductible from taxable income and the financial income. So what we're saying is this. We have financial statements and we have tax. And this statement says, when we are dealing with depreciable property, they are first deducted on the financial statement, then they are deducted on the tax. Generally speaking, that's not true. Why? Because remember, when it comes to taxes, we use makers. Makers take more deduction than the financial statement, which uses the straight line. Therefore, the answer will be before they are recognized in the financial statement. So are deductible first before they are deducted in the financial statement. Generally speaking, that's the case. Assuming we are using makers for taxes and straight line for financial reporting purposes. Let's look at the second statement and see if you can answer if it's true or false. An originating temporary difference is the, dif is the initial difference that occur when the book basis of an asset exceed but not exceeded by the tax basis of a liability. Hold on a second. It exceeds, but it doesn't work the other way if it exceeded by? No. The temporary difference is initiated when there is either a difference between the book basis of an asset exceeds or exceeded by, or the book basis and the tax basis of a liability exceeds or exceeded by. So it doesn't have to be only asset exceeded by the tax basis of a liability. The difference could be exceeded by or exceeded between the book basis and the tax basis of an asset or a liability. So this statement is false. Let's look at the this statement. A reversing difference occur when a temporary difference that originated in prior period is eliminated and the related tax effect is removed from the deferred tax account. Is this the definition of a reversing difference? Yes, that's exactly what happened. A reversing difference is eventually reverse and it gets eliminated from the deferred tax account. As a reverse, let's assume you had a deferred tax asset, you would remove the deferred tax asset. Let's assume you have a related deferred tax liability, you would remove the deferred tax liability. So this statement is true as far as reversing difference. A permanent difference result when the tax law causes an item reported on the income statement to be different from the same item reported on the balance sheet. Wow, hopefully you you know this is a false statement, okay? Because because there's no such thing as a, a, a amount different reported on the income statement than, than on the balance sheet. A permanent difference result when some items is reported on the financial statement. It's reported on the financial statement, but never 
go into the tax or reported on the tax, but never on the financial statement. Reported on the tax, but never on the financial statement. An example will be the dividend received deduction. The dividend received deduction is reported on tax, but never reported for financial statement. Or another example will be muni, muni interest, municipal interest. Muni interest, it's reported on the financial statement, but never for tax. Let's take a look at this question. A corporation has tax-free income um, that has a tax-free income has an effective tax rate that's less than the statutory regular tax rate. If you really think about it from a logical perspective, if you have tax-free income, it means you're going to pay less taxes. Therefore, it's going to be lower than your regular rate because your regular rate would include your financial accounting rate. But on your taxes, that tax-free income is basically not taxable. You don't have to worry about it. Therefore, it's going to be lower than that regular rate. In computing deferred income taxes, a new tax rate should be used if it's probable that a future tax rate will occur and the rate is reasonably estimatable. Uh, this is really funny the way they uh, this question is written. Okay, so when you compute your deferred income taxes for future years, which rate do you use? Do you do you estimate what the rate is going to be? No, you don't estimate. You would use the rate that is enacted. It's already passed by law. Enacted. That's the key word. The rate has to be already approved by Congress, by the IRS. Once it's enacted, then that's the rate that you would use. You don't guess how much the rate it's going to be. You should know what the current rate is. And if the rate changes, you have to change your deferred tax asset and deferred tax liability. You just have to change them. It's as simple as that. Okay. Let's look at multiple choice questions. A major distinction between temporary and permanent differences is what? So what's the major difference between them? Permanent differences are not representative on, of an acceptable accounting practice. No, that has nothing to do with the accounting method you are using. B, temporary differences occur frequently, whereas permanent differences only once. It has nothing to do with how many times it's occurring. B is out. So we're down to 50-50. Once an item is determined to be a temporary difference, it's maintained that status. However, a permanent difference can change in status with the passage of time. No, permanent difference never changes, okay, with the passage of time. Once an item is not included in tax, that's it. It's by law, it's not included in tax. So C is out. So by the process of elimination, we know the answer is D, but let's make sure we got it right. Temporary differences reverse themselves in subsequent accounting period, whereas permanent differences do not reverse. And that's exactly the difference between them. Temporary differences, and that's why temporary differences, they give you DTA and DTL, and those DTA and DTL would reverse, would reverse in the future. While permanent differences, permanent differences, remember permanent differences, no deferred tax asset, no deferred tax liability for them because they never reverse. The use of accelerated depreciation for tax purposes, which is AKA makers, and straight line depreciation for accounting purposes result in what? Okay, before we look at the answers, could, what does it result into? It results in some sort of a reversing. It's going to reverse down the road. Okay, how is it going to reverse? Well, if you're using accelerated method, you, remember, makers for tax, and for financial statement, you would use the straight line. Makers will have more depreciation early on. So it means you, you're going to have a D deferred tax liability because you're going to have less depreciation. So let's look at the answer. So first, you just want to make sure you understand what you are giving. So before you look at the answers, you kind of know what you are looking for. Okay. Result in larger amount of depreciation expense shown on the tax return than one on the income statement so far, so good. Over the as asset useful life, whoa, hold on a second, no. So makers does show more tax return initially than on the income statement, but over the asset useful life, they both equal to each other. So A is out. They both equal to each other. The asset being fully depreciated for tax purposes and half the time it takes to become fully depreciated for accounting purposes. There's no such thing. The rate half of the time, we take B out. 
a larger amount of depreciation expense shown on the income statement than on the tax return in the last year of the asset useful life. And let's look at this question. Let's look at this answer. Let's examine this one. A larger depreciation amount, a larger amount of depreciation expense shown on the income statement than on the tax return in the last year. And this is true. So you have to be very careful. This is a true statement. Let me tell you what they're saying here to make sure if you didn't get it, I explain it to you in detail. What we're saying is this. Early on, for example, if we have the asset year one, year two, year three, year four, and year five, you're going to have more depreciation for makers, less for financial. More, less, more, less. At some point, at some point, it's going to reverse. At some point, SL will be less. SL will be more and makers will be less. Usually that happens the last year or two. So in the last year, you're going to have more depreciation for S straight line than makers. Why? Because you took most of the depreciation early on and now in the, in, in the last year, everything is reversing. So make sure you understand this 100%. Okay? Make sure you understand this. Let's just make sure D is not the answer. A loss on a sale of an asset in question, if it's sold for its book value before it before its useful life expire, it has nothing to do with that. You know, whether its useful life expire or not does not determine the loss on the sale, okay? The loss on the sale is basically you compare what you received in cash versus the book value of the asset, the book value of the asset. Which of the following temporary differences that are normally classified as expenses or losses that are deductible after they are, after they are recognized in the financial statements? So are deductible later so they are for financial statements they are deductible now for tax purposes they are deductible later so which of these items advanced rental receipts first of all advanced rental receipts are receipts so they are not deductible you can take a out product warranty liability okay product warranty liability you take the expense now for the financial statement, and we did a lot of these examples, you debit an expense, you credit a liability when the sale takes place, but nothing on the tax return, and you'll take the deduction later on when the customer comes back for the product, and the answer is B indeed. The preachable property, no, the preachable property is the opposite. The preachable property, you will take the deduction now, like in makers, and you will take, and later on you will have less deduction. Fines and expenses resulting from a violation of the law, this should, be re, this should be eliminated because this is a permanent difference. Which of the following is a permanent difference that is recognized for tax purposes, but not for financial accounting purposes? So it's recognized for tax. A, the dividend, the deduction for dividend received from U.S. corporation. That's the answer. So you have tax and you have financial statement. The dividend received deduction is, re is, is a deduction taken for your tax return, never shown on the financial statement. And that's what they're asking. You can look at the others, but the answer is one. Which of the following is a temporary difference classified as a revenue or a gain that's taxable after it's recognized on the financial statement. So first, it's recognized on the financial statement. So the revenue or gain is recognized on the financial statements. Then later on, it's recognized for tax. It's recognized for tax. Which of those? Subscription receive in advance? Not at all. Subscription receive in advance. It's taxed first, okay? Because we receive the money. Prepaid royalty receive in advance. Same concept, taxed first. So those two are out. Now we're down to 50-50. Well, actually, we can get the answer immediately. Interest received on money bond, that's a permanent difference. That's out. So the answer must be C. An installment sales accounted for on the accrual basis for financial reporting purposes. So on the accrual basis, you will debit account receivable, you credit revenue. But for tax purposes, you are using the installment method. Installment method means what? The installment method means you don't, you don't uh, have taxes until you receive the cash. Let's take a look at this question. Once there's a lot of data, look at the question first. For Kibbutz company, the amount of temporary difference used to measure the third income taxes is what? Okay. We have uh, interest received on money bond. That's not a temporary difference. That's out. Fines from a violation of the law. That's out too. So the answer is there is no temporary difference in this question. The answer is zero. Okay. Because neither of them is temporary difference. They're both permanent difference. 
uh, again, once there's a lot of data, look at the question first. What is the amount of deferred tax liability at the end of 2017? So what is DTL? So to, f to find out what's DTL, we have to find out the, the difference between the book basis and the tax basis and multiply it by the rate. And they're telling us it's a deferred tax liability. So they don't even want us to know if it's whether it's a liability or an asset, just what is the amount? That's all what they're asking. Okay. So send the company deduct an insurance expense of 21,000 for tax purposes in 2017, but expense, but the expense is not recognized for accounting purposes. Okay. Um, in 2018, 2019, and 2020, taxable income, um, taxable income will be higher than financial income because no insurance expense will be deducted for tax purposes. But 7,000 of the insurance expense will be reported for accounting purposes in each of these years. Kind of they give us the answer in the first statement. Sandy Company has a tax rate of 45% and income taxes payable of 18,000 at the end of 2018. Well, guess what? They already told us right from the get-go. They told us they deducted an insurance expense of 21,000 for tax, but they did not deduct it for accounting. So the basis is for that prepaid insurance. What does that mean? It means I have a $21,000 difference. If I multiply this by 45%, that's going to give me $9,450. And that's my deferred tax liability, $9,450. Actually, in this question, they also gave you income taxes payable. Therefore, also you credit income taxes payable, $18,000. And your, your income tax expense, your income tax expense is those two combined, which is... Uh, this is 27,450. If my math is right, 27,450. Okay? But all what they're asking you in this question is about the 9,450. But they gave you the 18,000 and you can find out the income tax expense. Very, very interesting. <sighs> all right. So this is the, okay. I, I jumped the gun, but that's okay. Um, so what's the journal entry should be made? It's the same com it's the same thing, the same company. So notice you figure out, first of all, you could eliminate A because, and you could eliminate C because you know the deferred tax liability should be 9450. They already gave you income tax liability of 18,000. Therefore, the answer is B. Sorry, I just, but that's okay. That is okay. Assuming, assuming, assuming that income tax is payable, income tax is payable for 2018, is 24,000. What is the income tax expense for 2018? So they're asking us for 2018 income tax expense. All right, let's see. Income tax is payable is 24,000. This is the check that, that you will need to write for the IRS. Now, what is that going to do is this? Now, yeah, it's based on the same information here. So what happened is this, when you establish this deferred tax, deferred tax liability account, deferred tax liability account, you had in there 9450 when, when, it, you, when you initially, when you initially did this, you had 9450. Then in 2018, in 2018, uh, some of that difference would reverse. How much of the difference would reverse for 2018? Let's see. So 21,000. Okay, it's 7,000, 7,000, and 7,000. Therefore, we're going to take 7,000 for year 2018. Let's do this. We're going to take 7,000 would reverse times 0. 0.45. That's 3,150. It means your D2L would, would be reduced by 3150, will be reduced by 3150. This is 2017 when it was initiated. For 2018, it will be reduced by 3150. Why 3150? Because remember, in 2018, 2019, and 2020, each year, 7,000 of the 21,000 would reverse. And as they reverse, what's going to happen, the rate is 45%. 45% and 45%. So every year you would reverse 3150. Okay? Therefore, therefore it's going to reverse by 3150. But the question is what's income tax expense? Income tax expense, now you have to remember the formula. It's your income tax is payable 24,000 and you had a decrease, you had a decrease in the deferred tax liability. It means you're going to deduct that decrease of 31 3150. Therefore, your income tax 
expense for that year is 20,850. Let's book the journal entry. So this way you see the full picture. So income taxes payable, which is given to you of 24,000. That's given to you. That's fine. That's given to you and the problem. Then I'm going to erase this. Then we find out that we're going to be reducing deferred tax liability DTL. We're going to be reducing DTL by 3150. Now all we have to do is figure out the expense, the income tax expense. And the income tax expense is basically a plug, and the plug is the difference between those two, which is 20,850. 20,850, the income tax expense. So this is the journal entry. I hope they don't ask you for the journal entry next. No, they did not. Okay, that's good. Uh, which of the following difference differences would result in future taxable amount? Future taxable amount means you have a def deferred deferred tax liability. So what's, which one of these items, simply put, which one of these items gives you a deferred tax liability? Okay, expenses or losses that are deductible after they are recognized in financial income. No, if they are deductible after, they're going to give us a deferred tax asset because they're going to give us a future deduction. Revenues or gains that are taxable before they are recognized in financial income. No, if, if, we pay, we, if we already pay the taxes, that's going to give us deferred tax asset. Those both A and B are deferred tax asset, which is they give us future savings. Revenues or gains that are recognized in the financial income but never includable in taxable income. This is an easy elimination. This is, uh, this is, a, temp this is a permanent difference. Ex by the process of elimination, D should be the answer, but let's make sure it is the answer. Expenses or losses that are tax deductible before they are recognized for financial income. A case in point is depreciation, makers. Makers versus straight line. Makers versus the straight line. First, they are deducted first. Then we lose that deduction, which in turn will give us a future, uh, a future, uh, future taxable income, which in turn gives us a deferred tax liability. Let's look at this question. Again, once you see a lot of data, what should you do? Look at the question. What amount of income tax expense should a net company report at the end of 2017? So you're looking at income tax expense. Income tax expense is the current current taxes plus the deferred portion. So now we have to look at the data. A net company made the following journal entry um, for rent on property at leases. They debited cash, credited unearned revenue. Excellent. The payment represent rent for the years 2018, 2019. So this is the, this is what we received in 2017, but this rent is for the next two years. So for financial accounting purposes, the rent will be the rent revenue will be recorded later. The period covered by the lease. A net company is a cash basis. Cash basis means as soon as we receive this money. So for tax purposes, what they did, they debited cash and they credited revenue for tax purposes. Okay. Therefore, the difference between the, the liability, we have a liability on the books for 80000 and zero of it is on the uh, zero liability for tax purposes. Um, and that has income taxes payable of 123. So they gave us a component of income taxes. So they gave us 123000 okay, at the end of 2017, and the rate is 38%. Now what happened is we have a deferred component of 80000 a deferred component of 80000 and the tax rate is 0.38 which is give us a deferred taxed asset of 30,400. So what happened, our deferred taxed asset, this is a deferred taxed asset because we're gonna be paying the taxes on the 80,000 this year. In future years, we don't have to worry about the taxes. Therefore, it's gonna reduce 30, an increase in, so this was an increase in deferred taxed asset. It's gonna reduce, it's gonna reduce our tax rate, uh, our uh, income tax to 92,600 and the answer is C. I am not going to do the journal entry because it might be on the next slide. It might be. Yes. Okay, good. So what's the journal entry for this? So basically, that's the question here. What's the journal entry? Well, uh, 123 is... Da -da 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 -da. Actually, no. Actually, assuming the taxes payable at the end of 2018 is 136. This is for 2018. Let me give you the journal entry for 2017. So this way, you know how to do this. You know how to do this. So what the journal entry would be, it would look something like this. Um, we have a deferred taxed asset of 30,000, 30,400. We have uh, income tax expense. Um, 
the income tax expense that's a, that's a debit too income tax expense of that was given to us 123 and income I'm sorry income taxes payable is 123 income taxes payable is 123 that's given and we said income tax expense we computed income tax expense as 92,600 okay 92,600 all right this is what we have therefore we are starting 2018 with the DTA with the third taxed asset of 30,400 30,400 okay Assuming taxes at the end of 2018 is 136,000, which journal entry would we make? Well, first of all, income taxes payable should be 136. So we can we cannot eliminate this, we cannot eliminate this, we cannot eliminate this, we cannot eliminate any of those because they all have income taxes payable of 136. Okay. Now, what's going to happen the following year of this 80,000, 40,000 of it would reverse. It means half of it would reverse. Well, now we need to credit the third tax asset for half of it. Well, the third tax asset here, here what they're saying in, tran in, in transaction A, they're reversing the whole thing. That's incorrect because we only need to reverse half. The third tax asset reversed half. This looks good. Yes, this is reversed half. So your income, your income taxes payable is 136. That's giving. We're going to need to reverse half of the deferred tax asset because half of it reversed in 2018. Therefore, the answer is B. Okay, it cannot be... Oh, well, hold on a second. Oh, yeah, it cannot be C because they reversed the whole thing. And indeed, they debited the deferred tax asset. They increased it. It should not be increased. It should be decreased. So the answer is B. Understanding the journal entry, it's going to make your life much, much easier. Okay, let's take a look at this question. When a change in the tax rate is enacted into law, so basically there was a change in the rate, its effect on the existing, its, its effect on the existing deferred income tax account should be what? Okay, so basically we had a change in the tax rate. So we simply put, how do we treat changes in tax rate? That's the question. Well, well, when, when there's a change in tax rate, we have to do something. Is it A, handled retroactively? Retroactively means, do we have to go back and change anything? And the answer is no. This is not a change in accounting principle. Consider it, but if only it recorded in the account, if it reduces a deferred tax liability or increase a deferred tax asset. That will be nice, but you cannot choose what's the effect of it. Reported as an adjustment, yes, to tax expense in the period of change. That's right. You would report it as, a, as an adjustment to tax expense. It's an adjustment to tax expense. Therefore, you have to report it as so. Let's take a look at this question. It's basically, in a sense, think of it as a simulation. So you could see something like this on the CP exam as a simulation. Basically, what you are what you are being asked to do, you have the definition of temporary differences, the definition of permanent differences, and they're giving you items. Do you know how does it work? Can you match the item with the with the with the with the topic? For example, uh, numerous items create differences between taxable income and pre-tax financial income. For purposes of accounting recognition, these differences are two types, temporary and permanent. These two classifications are further divided into other six categories. So they're given us the, 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 the permanent differences, the two types of permanent differences, and the four types of temporary differences that I went over into the lecture. So let's see if we can identify them. If you can identify them, that's good. It means you are starting to get this under control. Litigation accrual. What type of adjustment is litigation accrual? First of all, is it temporary? First, you have to de decide if it's a temporary or a difference because you don't want to kind of go through them. Litigation is li litigation accrual is temporary. Is it going to be a revenue or an expense? Well, it's not going to be a revenue. It's going to be an expense. Okay, so we're down to A and B. Is it an expense or loss that are tax deductible after they are recognized in the financial income? And the answer is yes. That's the definition of uh, litigation accrual temporary difference basically they are deducted later on in the income tax fines and expenses resulting from a violation of the law are they temporary are they temporary or are they permanent well they are permanent so that's it we don't have to worry about a b c and d it's either e or f well item recognized for accounting purposes but not tax purposes yes that's the answer fines and penalties are recognized for financial accounting purposes but never for taxes three 
percentage depletion. You have to know whether it's temporary or permanent. And per percentage depletion is not temporary. It's a it's 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 not temporary. It's a permanent difference. Is it item recognized for accounting purposes, but not for tax? No, actually, it's recognized for tax, but not accounting. So the percentage of completion is accepted. The percentage of depletion is accepted for tax purposes, but it's not accepted. So it gives you more depletion, more deduction, but it's never accepted. It's never accepted for financial accounting purposes. Therefore, it's, it's, uh, it's F. Four, proceeds from life insurance carried by the company on a key officer. Is this temporary or permanent? And the answer, you should know it's it's permanent. Therefore, it's either E or F. E, items recognized for accounting purposes, but not for tax. Yes, proceeds from life insurance, they are recognized for financial accounting, but not for tax. Advanced rental payment. Are they temporary or are they differences? Advanced rental payment, they are temporary. Therefore, we have to be looking here. So those are advanced rental. So it's not expenses. We are dealing with revenues. Okay, so is it C or D? Revenues or gain that are taxable before they are recognized in the financial statements? Yes, that's true. When they pay us rent, we tax the rent immediately. If, although it's advanced rental, we have to tax it immediately. Six, depreciation property. Depreciation property is temporary difference. And depreciation is an expense, therefore we'll take out C and D or A and B. Expenses that are tax deductible after they are recognized in the financial statements or expenses that are tax deductible before they are recognized in the financial statements. Remember, depreciation, we assume we are using makers first. If we are using makers, it's going to give you more depreciation first. Therefore, the answer is B. Installment sales accounted for on the accrual basis for accounting and cash basis for tax purposes. First of all, this is a temporary difference. And specifically, it's a revenue related item. It's either C or D. Well, um, revenue or gain that are taxable after they are recognized in the financial. Yes, they are taxable later, which would give us the answer is D. Royalties received in advance, this should be easy. This should be similar to 5, which is C, just like you receive something in advance. Product warranty liability. Hopefully, you're getting to know those. Product warranty liability is a temporary difference, and it's an expense, and it's similar to number 1, which is A, litigation accrual. Okay, the expense is taken later for tax purposes. It's taken later. Okay, the expense is taken later. It means it's going to give you a deferred tax asset because the expense is taken later. The deferred, it's going to give you a deferred tax asset because the expense is taken later. Deduction for dividend received from U.S. corporation. Hopefully, you know, this is a permanent difference and it's a, it goes on tax purposes, never on the financial return. Therefore, the answer is F as in Frank. Interest received on state and muni obligation, municipal bond obligation, well, that's also a permanent difference, but that, that item goes on the tax, but never on the financial accounting. Therefore, the answer is E, E as in Edward, E as in Edward. Look at this uh, simulation. Basically, you can consider this a mini simulation or actually a complete simulation. Karma Company report pre-tax financial income of 300000 in each of the three years, 2016, 2017 and 2018. So 300,000, 300,000, and 300,000. The company is subject to a 20% tax rate and has the following differences between pre tax financial income and taxable income. An installment sale of 48,000 in 2016 is reported for tax purposes. Uh, is reported for tax purposes over two years period at a constant amount per month beginning July 1st, 2016. Well, the entire sale is recognized for book purposes. So the, 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 as far as book purposes are concerned, the sale has been recorded. Now for tax purposes, it's reported on a month, basically it's prorated on a monthly basis over two years. So let's first do this computation real quick. We have 48,000. Divide this by 24 month because that's what they want us to do. So let's do this first. You should be on the exam. You should be working this computation very quickly. 48,000 divided by 24. That's going to give us 2,000 per month. 2,000 per month. And for 2016, what's going to happen for 2016, we're going to have to take out because... It's included in here. The whole 48,000 is included in, in, in the gap income. And this is gap income. It's included in gap income. So we have to take out. We only have to keep 
um, let's say July so beginning July August September October November and December we only have to keep we only have to keep 12 we have we only have to keep if it's 24 we have to take out we have to keep six so we have to take out 18 months of this 18 so 18 times 2000 is 36,000 therefore we have to t back out 36,000 for the installment sales okay back out 36,000 by backing out 36,000 we only included 2,000 times 12 we only included uh, 20 uh, we only inc sorry 2,000 times 6 we only included 12,000 so we backed out 36 we included only 12,000 for 2016 so taxable income so now we can get to taxable income so taxable income is 300,000 minus 36 is 264,000 we multiply this by 20 percent and that's going to give us 52,800 52,800 now we are ready to book the entry we are ready to book the entry for 2016 what is the entry for 2016 well we know our income tax is payable so for 2016 2016 income taxes payable we already know this amount is 52,800 now the deferred component the deferred component is in the future we're going to have more revenue remember we had 48,000 in installment sales 48,000 in installment sales of which we already we already accounted for 12 it means we still have a difference of 36,000 okay remember we still have a difference of 36,000 well this difference this 36,000 it's going to give us deferred tax liability because we have to pay taxes and they're telling us the rate is 20 percent it means we're going to have a deferred tax liability of 7,200 7, therefore deferred tax liability is 7,200 now what's the income tax expense or I'm just gonna call it the expense for short the income tax expense is those two together equal to 60,000 therefore income tax expense equal to 60,000 B interest received by the company on the state municipal bond is 3,000 in 2017 and 2018 this is not recognized a revenue as revenue for tax purposes but it's recognized for book purposes well now we, we are told that for 2017 and 2018 there was three thousand dollar involved uh, included here that's part of the muni bond and what do we know about muni bond muni bond are not taxable as far as we're concerned therefore what we have to do we have to take that three thousand out for each of these years okay because we don't include we don't tax muni bond then then for 2017 remember we still have 36,000 to reverse for 2017 we have 12 months for 2017 and each month remember the we're going to have to include the income at the rate of 2000 therefore we have to include 24,000 of income of income from the installment sales that's going to reverse in 2017 now we come up with taxable income 300,000 minus 3 plus 24 321 321 we multiply this by 20 percent that's our taxable income multiplied by 20 percent it's going to give us 64,000 64,200 again our income tax is payable for 2017 now let's do 2017 2017 income taxes payable which is what we have to pay to the IRS it is 64,200 now what happened is in 2017 24,000 reversed 24,000 reversed it means now we pay the taxes therefore we have to take our obligation we have to reduce our deferred tax liability by 24,000 times 20 percent because it's reversing remember it's reversing it have to be taken out times 20 percent and this is going to give us 4,800 4,800 it means we're going to have to debit so this is a credit so we're going to have to debit deferred tax liability we're going to have to debit deferred tax liability 
4,800. Now, what's the expense? The expense is the income taxes payable minus the decrease, which is, we already know what the decrease is, uh, 4,800. So the expense or income tax expense, I'm just going to put expense for short, expense for short will be 59,000, 59,000. 400. So notice we reduced our deferred tax liability by 4,800. Okay. Now, if you're really keeping track of it, we started with 7,200. Deferred tax liability, we reduced it now by 4,800. It means the remainder is how much? 0, 0, 12, 4, 2400. It means we still have deferred tax liability of 2400 okay let's do 2018 2018 we have 300,000 we have to take 3,000 out of the municipal bond and what's left from the income from the income is six month worth of, of the installment method which is 12,000 so we have to add $12,000 from the installment method so notice this 36,000 this 36,000 that we excluded in 2016 some of it reversed in 2017, some of it reversed in 2018. So all of it is reversed now. It's easy. 300,000 minus 3,000 for the mini bond plus 12,000 will give us 309. Now the 309 times 20%, 309 times 20%, and that's going to give us income taxes payable of 61,000. 800 61,800 now I'm going to abbreviate income taxes payable ITP income taxes payable of 61,800 61,800 now the deferred tax liability has to be gone so the deferred tax liability the deferred tax liability DTL should be gone should be gone it should be now what's left of it which is 2400 2400 and the expense is income taxes payable minus the decrease which is uh, 54 uh, 59,400 as well 59,400 and this is the entry for 2018. I know this is a long problem, but if you can follow it, if you can follow this, because what we did, we did the, uh, we computed taxable income, we went from gap income to IRS income, and we went, and for each entry and for each problem, we did the, uh, we did the entry, we did the uh, journal entry. Okay, if you could do this, this is excellent. This will be, this will be great. Okay, let's take a look at more exercises okay or more multiple choice again once you have a lot of data just go ahead and skip to the question and see what the question is asking you because they could be asking you a simple a simple question or they could be asking you a very complicated question don't waste your time looking at the whole problem look at the question first and try to focus on the data okay how much would Arag aragano corporation report taxable income so they're asking for taxable income on the income statement so taxable income on the income statement taxable income on its income statement for December for December 31st year 20 uh, year 30 okay now we have to see what we are giving um, Aragano report net income in, in, it, in its year 13 financial statements before income tax expense of 400,000 Aragona has been uh, has been profitable in the past and expect to continue to be profitable. The company expense warranty cost in year 13 on the books for 35,000. Um, I think this uh, I think what we're looking for really is report taxable income. It's IRS taxable income because IRS taxable income because sorry Okay, let's take a look at this question. Once you see a lot of data, focus on the question first. Focus on the question first. How much would Aragona report as taxable income? It means IRS on the income statement. Taxable income means how much would they report for the IRS? Okay, so 
the A Corporation reports net income on its year 13 financial statements before income tax expense of 400000 So this is gap. A has been profitable in the past and expect to be continued profitable. The company expense warranty costs in year 3 on the books for 35 and is expected to impact the tax return in year 16. So it's going to be later on. A Corporation also had $60,000 in revenue that will not be taxed until 2015. So we have two items, the 35 and the 60 we have to make an adjustment for. A Corporation has a tax rate for year 13 of 30% and an active tax rate of 40% before. In addition, Ergona Corporation made four installment payment of 25000 in year 2015. So basically, what's income taxes payable? Well, GAAP income is 400,000 gap income is given as gap income is given as 400,000 now from gap income we have to make certain adjustments we have to make certain adjustments first of all you eliminate d because d is gap income okay what are the adjustments well they included they deducted warranty cost well we cannot deduct warranty cost for for irs purposes therefore we have to add 35,000 Simply put, from this 400000 for financial accounting, they deducted thirty five. That deduction 35 is not acceptable. Therefore, we have to add it back. Okay? Then they included in this 400000 what's included is $60,000 revenue, which is not taxable yet. Therefore, we have to take out the 60000 as far as taxes are concerned. I think those are the only two items. So taxable income is 400 minus 35 plus 60 so that's 375 so the answer is 375 375 375,000 that's taxable income okay same problem how much would a corporation report as current income tax expense now they're asking us how much they would report as current as current income tax expense and be careful the word current it means what should be their income taxes payable well we already computed their income taxes are 375 okay now you have to be very careful why do you have to be very careful because you have to use the tax rate that's enacted for future periods the tax rate enacted for future periods is 40 40 percent that's if you are computing DTA, but we're not actually computing DTA, we're computing the current. Therefore, 375, actually, this is easy, times 30% because they want the current. We don't have to worry about the 40%. So 375 times 30% is 112,500, and the answer is, is B. Okay? How much we have deferred income tax expense? Now we have to be very careful. Now that's what I meant to say. You have to look at the uh, future rate the future rate is 40 percent remember in this problem we had a thirty-five thousand dollar insurance that's going to be the third that's an expense and we had a revenue of sixty thousand that's going to be the third now the rate is forty percent for the thirty-five thousand we're going to multiply it by forty percent and that's going to give us a deferred tax liability the so thirty-five thousand times forty forty percent that's fourteen thousand now for the revenue that's going to give us um the expense, yeah, the expense will give us, yes. Um, I'm sorry, the expense will give us a deferred taxed asset. I apologize. The 14000 will be a deferred taxed asset. The 60000 we have to pay taxes on it. Therefore, it's going to be a deferred tax liability times 40%, and that's 24000 of a deferred tax liability. So what's the deferred component? We net them. The deferred component is 10000 The deferred component is 10000 and specifically, it's a D. TL, DTL, a deferred tax liability, a deferred tax liability. So the current component is 112,500. This is the current component. And the deferred component is 10,000. And the last question is, what's the total income tax expense? Well, the total income tax expense is the current plus the deferred, which equal to 122,500. 122, 500. Now, I'm going to go a step further, and I'm going to show you the journal entry for this. Again, I know I keep doing this, but the more you know it, the better off you are. So you debit income tax expense. That's the total, 122,500. 
you debit DTA and you credit DTL. DTA was 14,000 and DTL was 24 and income taxes payable was 112 500 now remember what what I did I already know the all the answers but in the real world you would and on the exam you will start with this then you start with this and you start with this and this will be a plug but we know all the answers I just wanted to show you the journal the journal entry a lot of data read the question first the enacted tax rate for the current year is 25 percent and 30 percent thereafter in December 31st balance sheet what should they report as the third income tax liability all right let's see what they have so B Corporation is a newly organized company reported pre-tax financial income of 100000 That's GAP for the current year. Among the items reported are premium on insurance, life insurance with the Broadford as the owner. Well, we don't count this because this is a, uh, this is a, uh, this is a permanent difference. Interest received on mini bond. Uh, easy. Permanent. Uh, uh, permanent difference. So what is the deferred component? There is no deferred component because both of these items are permanent. Both of these items are permanent. So let's take a look at this question. Once you see a lot of data, just look at the question first. How much permanent differences between book and taxable income exist as of tw year 2013? Okay, now you can look at the data and it's easier to see what you're looking for. P has pre-tax financial income of 125, aka gap income. They have interest income received on the state of Florida, 18,000, that's permanent. Depreciation and access of financial statements, that's temporary. Rent received in advance, that's temporary. And they made four installment payment. So it's 18,000, very easy, because I'm know, I know what I'm looking for. What amount of taxable income should be reported for P, P company? So they're looking for taxable income. Well, guess what? You have gap income of 125, we have gap income of 125. Interest income received on the state of Florida bonds. Well, this is, this has to be taken out. This is not taxable. Therefore, I need to deduct this 18,000. I have to deduct this 18,000 because it's not taxable. Tax depreciation and access of financial statements. So I have more depreciation as far as taxes are concerned. So I have to deduct 8,000 of depreciation. 8,000 of depreciation. Then, so I took care of this, I took care of this. Rent received in advance, well, I'm going to have to add the rent because if I receive the money, I have to pay taxes on it. Therefore, my taxable income is 113,000. 113,000. What is my current income tax expense? Well, easy. If my taxable income is 113 and I'm dealing with year 2013, 2013, my tax rate is how much in 2013? 2013 is 35. Therefore, I have to multiply this by 35%. And that's going to give me, that's going to give me what? Uh, 35%, 39,550, 39,550. Um, what amount of current income taxes payable should be reported? Now, we computed income tax expense, but what's the amount that should be reported on the balance sheet? Well, that's easy because we computed the, the, the number as 39,550, but we made we made installment payment for installment payment. We paid 36,000 already. We paid 36,000 already. So how much do we have to report? Only 3,550. This is how much we report. S company has a temporary difference in year one that's from a non-current liability and expected to reverse in year two, three, and four. In year one, the tax rate is 30%. In year two, three, and four, the enacted rate is 40. Under US GAAP, the deferred tax liability is, which is based on which of the following tax rate. So simply put, they're asking us, we're computing the deferred taxed asset. Which rate do we use for that? Well, we're going to be using the rate that's enacted in those future years. And that's the enacted rate for year two, three, and four. So when we compute the deferred taxed asset and the deferred tax liability, we use the enacted future rate, the enacted future rate. In year one, its first year of operation, Mac Industries has a temporary difference resulting from the following two items. 
depreciation expense, warranty expense. Which of the following differences should be reported as a current deferred tax asset liability on year one balance sheet? This is a tricky question, especially if you took the exam long time ago. As far as deferred tax asset and deferred tax liability, none of it is current. We used to have a current section and a non-current section. That's no longer the case. Neither. The only thing that we have now is long-term. We no longer have current and long-term for deferred tax asset and deferred tax liability. It's all non-current. Before it used to be, look at the asset or the liability. Is it a long term or a short term? And you will determine your your current whether it's a current deferred tax asset or a current defer or current deferred tax asset or a current deferred tax liability. Or it's if it's a long term. No longer the case. It's all non-current. Easy, easy. Okay. What amount should T report in year one balance sheet for deferred income tax liability? So they told us you're looking for a DTL. So just what the amount what amount should be? So. T received cash in the amount of 20000 that was included in year one financial statement, of which 12000 will be taxed in year two. All right. So we have 12000 of temporary difference because this is the amount that's going to be reversing. T enacted tax rate is 30% for year one, 25% for year two. I'm interested in the 25% because it's going to reverse in year two. That's equal to 3000 Therefore, my deferred tax liability equal to 3000 Again, read the question first. Assuming no other temporary differences and the rental income is taxable when received, what amount should we have a deferred taxed asset? So they're asking us for the deferred taxed asset. On June 1st, year one, on June 20th, year one, sorry, not June 1st, on June 20th, year one, Benson leased the building and received rental payment in the amount of 42000 The payment was for the rental period beginning July, year one, till July, one year two. So basically, here's what happened. This is year one, and this is year two. So they received the payment, and the payment covered one half of year one, one half of year two. So if we received 42,000, it means 21,000 belong to year one, and 21,000 will be deferred. Okay. Brands and tax rate are 25% for year one and 30% for year two. So what's the deferred tax asset? Well, it's, we're going to be deferring 21,000 and it's going to be based on year two rate, which is 30%, which is equal to 6,300, 6,300. Okay, what's the total temporary difference uh, for FISC? Now they're asking for temporary difference, okay? Life insurance policies, that's permanent. Estimated for future expenses, estimated for future warranty expense, yes, that's a temporary difference. Estimated for bad debt, sure, it's a temporary difference. The answer is C, 43,000. Those are the temporary differences. If you have any questions about this topic, please let me know about any questions that we went over. Please let me know. In the next session, I will start to work with NOL or net operating losses, and it's going to be based on the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, which is the latest NOL. Again, this topic will be covered in intermediate accounting. Once again, I strongly encourage you to visit my website and I strongly encourage you to subscribe as it's an investment in your career. Good luck and study hard for your CPA.